Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm going to continue my coverage of my run through the 2021 War of the Ring International Tournament. And this is round three, game one. I was randomly chosen to be Shadow in my game against my opponent, Jim. And you can see our opening hands. Oh, and just to give context for where we are in the tournament, I am currently two and two at the time that I'm playing this game, and I need to win my next four games in a row to be able to make it to the top cut. So we'll see how that goes. This is the beginning of the game. I allocated, I'm Shadow, I allocated one eye, and then I rolled four more on turn one. So this is a very atypical start. I have not typically dealt with this. I have two dice to use on my first turn of the game. Neither of them are musters. Uh, I, my saving grace is I see Warren with Sorrow and Toil, which is obviously a really great card to get early in the game. Can make a big difference in messing with the free people. My opponent did not get too many character movements, which is probably fine considering I have five eyes right now. And Unfortunately, though he has Gandalf as guide, he does not have any playable cards, even with these two beautiful Palantirs. So that's certainly quite unlucky for him. You can see what plays out. He goes ahead and draws a character card and gets another unplayable card. So that's just, just bad luck. I pass <laughs> because I can, and he draws another one. And then the, another card, unplayable early in the game. So that's just, that's just bad luck. I mean, it's probably worse to have rolled four eyes and no musters, but but still, he's not running away with it. So it could have it could have been a lot worse for me. And okay, at this point, I go ahead and move one army. Why not? And he per musters elves. I think that's reasonable. I mean, I always like getting getting armies prepared for for incoming. But he doesn't know he doesn't know where I'm attacking yet. I don't really know where I'm attacking yet. Um, and also one thing I should note, you may notice that I have a very large font size for, for these numbers. Um, I want to make this viewable on mobile because I imagine many people would enjoy being able to watch a video on mobile. If you have suggestions for the font size or anything else, please let me know. Thank you to everybody who's given me feedback so far. I will continue to try and evolve it. And I also want to say thank you very much to Andrew Poltier, who has worked ongoingly on this Java application. It's it's really incredible, all the people who put time and energy into it. But Andrew in particular has maintained it recently and has given me these features to be able to, to make them bold and we'll, we'll hopefully make it available generally to everyone soon. I'm sure if you want an early version of this, if you want to make videos, he'll, he'll give you a copy too. So just wanted to call that out. Thank you again, Andrew. Okay, so the the first turn, not too many exciting things. I decided to draw a character card, maybe maybe draw a strategy card, but I figure character card if I'm going heavy corruption inadvertently, and then I manage to miss. He moves, and I still manage to miss. And I will say, I think he played that well by moving on his last die, because that way he's going to be able to hide at the start of next turn. If I had caught him and I happened to have a card early on that would have let me do some damage to him by being revealed, he strategically waited until the very last action of the turn. So he's going to basically get two actions in a row and would have been able to hide in between. As it turns out, I missed. So five wasted dice turn one. I'm psychologically demoralized right here. I don't mind having a whole bunch of eyes as long as I catch the fellowship, but having a bunch of eyes and then missing the fellowship is just painful. All right, but I'm drawing great cards. So I have two red tiles and new powers rising is just a beautiful card to get early. So I am, you know, the the thing is, I think when you have sort of a rough, a rough run with a action dice or combat dice or whatever it is, you should remember there's a lot of randomness in the game. And yes, maybe sometimes you're going to get just completely bad luck in every single aspect of the game. But, you know, I'm getting some bad action dice, but I'm getting some good luck on the cards. And so often, I think in the long run, the game is long enough. There are enough dice. There's enough randomness that on, on average, it's going to balance out. And if you stay focused and try and make the best of what you got, then often you can do well. So I'm trying to maintain that mindset even after feeling like it was completely wasted first turn. Okay. So he gets some reasonable cards, nothing particularly special. I get a, a much nicer roll. I wanted my two musters. I got three, so that's great. 
Um, I go ahead and get Isengard to war. He's continuing to push the elves. It makes me nervous that he has Kyrdin's ships or, or who knows what. But, um, you know, I think generally getting elves to war is a, is a good policy. It's eight, eight victory points on the board. So they're probably going to get ta- attacked at some point in the game. All right, I go ahead and get Saruman. That makes sense. He goes ahead and moves Gondor. And, you know, I think this this was an interesting moment in the game because he doesn't want to get the elves all the way to war because then I can muster the Witch King sooner. But I can't actually muster the Witch King this turn. I didn't roll any musters last turn, and I wouldn't even be able to... I would get Sauron to war, and then next turn, yeah, probably I'd be able to get the Witch King, but he has a whole extra muster here that's just sitting there that had he used this muster right here to get the elves to war, he could have already put a muster into the elves right away this round, round two, and then these these strongholds just would have been really tough to deal with. And if you take all of the elven strongholds off the board, I mean, that's... That's just a tough, um, it might be worth it giving me the Witch King early. So, and by mustering Gondor, he sort of encourages me to come attack Gondor. Maybe he has some good Gondor defense cards, but it's not going to be that hard for me to get Gondor to war if I want to. Um, so... So I don't know about that. I think I think that was he should have. Normally I don't want to muster myself all the way to war, but if I if Shadow as free, but if Shadow has such a slow start and I have an extra muster sitting here, is he does he have something else great to do with it? You know, if I had another great muster card like a Rohan muster card or something like that or an Elven muster card in my hand, and I want to do you know something with that, then then maybe. But I mean, it is an army muster, so he could be moving armies into Westmnet or to Carrick or to you know, into Erebor, or even getting this one dude into Minas Tirith. Um, so there are some things he can be doing with that army muster, but he invested two already in mustering the elves to war. Why not go all the way at this point? All right, but he didn't, he mustered Gondor, and I'm perfectly happy to see that. I want the opportunity to be able to still come attack the elves before they get to war. If he's going to wait that long to get them to war, that's that's fine with me. I'm, you know, a shadow, I'm often willing to delay the Witch King delay getting a card, uh, delay an extra die in exchange for not having an elite. That's, that's fine with me. I will, I will usually, usually an extra elite and a stronghold will often cost me well more than one action. I don't know. I don't know exactly what the exchange rate is, but it can take a lot of extra dice. All right. So he goes ahead and does this move into Westminster and this move into Old Forest Road. I think that's great. Um, makes a lot of sense. And I go ahead and get Sauron to war. Now it's tricky. You know, I really have not gotten my armies moving at all, but I had such a bad experience turn one by not getting any musters at all. I'm worried that, you know, I'd rather have a few too many musters early on than not enough. And so while I'm very, I would have been very happy to move my armies and get armies moving up North because that's my plan. um, I'm more worried that I'm not going to get enough musters. So, and also if he gets the elves to war, which he still might next turn, I want to be prepared to muster the witch king if he's going to do that. So that's why I decided to use that muster there instead of an army, though I was, I, I really wanted to use the army too. All right. He moves the fellowship and I hit him on this movement. And it's just, you know, we just shake your head. You miss on five dice, but you hit him on two dice. So, you know, okay. Sometimes that happens. All right. He gets revealed. That's obviously bad luck for him to get revealed early. And um, he goes high pass. It is a zero. And, and so that's, you know, that's not too bad corruption wise. And and now at this point, he's two moves out. I go ahead and play Warren with Sauron Toil. Now, maybe it would have made, made sense to play that a little sooner. Maybe it would have made sense to use that character die to you know get armies moving i don't know um i had i had five cards in hand and i like this return to valinor for a combat effect and i certainly like all of these other cards for their card effect so um that's why i went ahead and did it but that's you know these are these are the little decisions in the game that you, you have to make at every moment. Is it worth it to discard a card and get my armies moving faster? Do I want to get this card in play now so I don't have to discard a card when I know that I want to play this at some point? 
I guess my thinking is, I know I want to play this at some point very soon. And if I get a bunch of Palantirs next turn, and I think to myself, oh, I wish I would have saved this and used my Palantirs last turn instead of this, and I'd get too few armies, then, you know, maybe I'll regret it a little bit. But I have three cards that I'm very happy to play at any point. So if it turns out that I get more than three Palantirs, then maybe I'll feel sad about wasting this, this attack die. But otherwise, I'm going to want to play these. So that, that was my thinking there. I have a lot of really good playable cards, so I'm not going to feel too bad if I get a bunch of Palantirs next turn. And my armies are moving so slowly. Anyway, I'm like, oh my gosh, things are going so slowly. I just have to, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I keep the pressure on the Fellowship. I got lucky with this early reveal, so let's try and take advantage of that. All right, so that was my thinking there. Um, I get Dreadful Spells and Day Without Dawn. Love to see that early. Would be even better if I get the um, South Rounds and Easterlings to war. So I'm feeling good about that muster because I'm that much closer to getting getting all the musters. And maybe I can delay Gandalf or, or delay an Aragorn with, with that Day Without Dawn. So he gets Wizard Staff and um, he's at eight cards. So... I guess that's sort of this is like the double drawback of that that first turn that he had, because instead of being able to play cards and cycle into new cards, he just had to draw more cards. And now he's ending up discarding. And OK, he can discard cards that aren't so useful, but it's still it's still a little disappointing. So that, you know, even though my bad luck was quite obviously bad on the very first turn, he actually had quite bad luck, too. I mean, four unplayable cards is very unlikely for shot for free i think at the beginning of the game all right so he discards great company i think that makes total sense and then he also discards kindred of glorfindel i think those are two very reasonable discards um yeah I'm totally fine all right i allocate an eye and i don't get any more and i'm happy to see that i mean generally when the fellowship starts the turn revealed I'm happy to have fewer eyes in the pool because just statistically, he's not going to move that many times. So the benefit that I'm getting out of having a bunch of eyes is lower. I'm also thinking a little bit long-term, is he ever going to get rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil? I mean, probably not. He can theoretically get into Dale and get rid of it, and that will save him if he, if he still has Dale at the time he gets there. He'll save a point of corruption and it'll only cost him one extra movement. So I want to make sure, you know, I should be prepared to get Dale before the fellowship gets to Dale. I think that's very likely, um, but that's something I'm thinking about now. So that's why I'm, I'm going to send these guys north. And he's just not rolling a lot of, of movement at this point. Um, he's rolled one movement every turn um, and he's revealed right now. So he didn't put Gandalf, I mean, he didn't put Strider as guide. I think it you know, maybe you consider having Strider as guide when I'm only going to roll four dice. My chances of being able to kill off Gandalf by both hiding and moving and having a will of the West is pretty, pretty low. Um, I guess he has wizard staff and he knows he has wizard staff. So it makes sense to keep, to keep Gandalf. He's going to play that um, and, and want to play a card. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's even more reason. If you have wizard staff and you know you're going to want to play it, then do you do you want to have Strider as guide because you're going to hide and then move and you're and you're not worried about you know I guess I guess you don't get the extra card draw, but you do get to hide. So I I think maybe I would have considered seriously considered putting Strider as guide. I would give up the extra card, but I've been having trouble playing all my cards anyway. Um, give up the extra card draw, but in exchange, I get to hide and just get the fellowship going faster. So I might've done that. All right. So I'm certainly feeling great about only one eye here. All of my rolls since turn one are just turning around. I mean, this is just a beautiful, beautiful roll. Um, it's possible if I go, I don't know that I'm going towards Gondor, but if I'm going towards Gondor, I can, I could get the witch King. If I go up North, I don't know that I have enough tax. I have I have one, two, three, four, five movement. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not. I'm not really getting the north to war this turn unless I also have a card that lets me move and attack, which I don't. So I'm not getting the north to war. Um, but this is this is interesting. Okay. So, and I now have the potential if I want to use both of these two muster dice. I have the potential to get day without dawn active. 
So I might consider not using this as an army movement and just mustering twice. We'll see what I do. Okay, so he goes ahead and hides. What else can he do? Makes sense. Um, and then I get my armies moving north because I'm heading that way. I go ahead and muster the south rounds and easterlings. I go ahead and continue moving. You know, I haven't drawn Corsairs of Umbar yet. I'm thinking, you know, okay, where am I going to get my points? This is five up here in the north. And then I'm going to come in at some point and hopefully take Helm's Deep. That's seven. Presumably I'm going to go, maybe I'm going to go after Lorien. He doesn't seem to be mustering the elves. He's he's waiting. Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe he's going to do it now, <laughs> given that given that he has these three three musters. Um, and then Pelargir will just be an easier thing to capture than Edoras. Or if he has, um, yeah, it's just th this is an easy one victory point at some point. So we'll see, we'll see where my points come from, but I'm certainly thinking I'm going to head up north. I'm going to get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war early because I want to be able to play Day Without Dawn, so I also want to be prepared to use these units to good effect in the north. So we'll see, we'll see what comes of it. All right, I play the Ring is Mine because I want to get out of my hand. I have to play it at some point, um, and we're, we'll see what he musters. So um, he plays Celeborn's Gladrim, and I think that makes sense. It cycles, it cycles a card. Um... So why not? The other thing to consider is what about getting the elves to war now? I mean, he, he had the chance to do it before. Um, he sees that this army is coming up north. So would I do I rather play Celeborn's Gladrim now? Or do I want to just muster the elves once and then muster two more elites in here? I mean, what am I going to do with this army if, if the elves are at war? Uh, this army is just going to be sad running into Woodland Realm. I mean, maybe the, maybe it'll be able to take it, but I mean, he could get a full Woodland Realm. So, okay, maybe his plan is cycle into scouts and then retreat the north into there. I mean, that could be okay too. All right, so he gets helped on look for. I continue with my armies marching up, and now he moves the dwarves. So, okay. I mean, maybe I'm. Maybe you're going to be able to muster a unit into the dwarves before I get there. I guess, but I don't know. I still might get the elves at this point. I mean, I, I realize he's deciding. So as shadow, I'm very happy. I'm deciding. Great. He's not. He's not going after the. Uh, he's not mustering the elves to war. I'm going to save this die just in case he um, musters the elves, but. I'm happy for him to not do that. Okay, so um, I go ahead and move, and then he moves some armies. He gets Westamnet into Helm's Deep. That's always great when you manage to do that. And he, he gets this northern elite here, um, which I think is clever. I, I mean, maybe he's threatening Angmar at some point if the north goes to war, but it's also possible for this unit to, to transit over to... Rivendell, which can be good, give a little extra defense there. Um, and since I have new powers rising, he doesn't know that yet, but since I have new powers rising, that's that's quite useful. All right, and so now what do you do? What do you do with this with this army muster? Do I attack into here to make sure that he, if he does at some point change his mind and finally decide to muster the elves, that I can, I can besiege Woodland Realm? Um, I'm worried about him having scouts at this point, but the longer I wait, the greater chances that he has it. Um, or do I muster the Southrons and Easterlings to war thinking that, you know, he might, he might manage to kill off Gandalf on the first action next turn. And then if he has a will of the West, I would be prepared to get rid of it with day without dawn. So I don't know. What would you do here? Pause the video, comment, think for yourself. What would you do? can see my cards. So I attack Old Forest Road. And I still continue to think that's right. I mean, I don't want to have so many musters next turn that, you know, they're wasted. Um, and I want to get up there. I'm, I'm worried that he's going to change his mind with the elves, and I just, I don't want him mustering them. And um, he plays Confusion, and I'm very pleased to not see uh, scouts. And... Um, you know, I managed to take out Old Forest Road. So this is this is great. And now I have the ability to get the Witch King with 
um, with attacking Dale if I want to. I think he does not have scouts. I think it's very unlikely that he has scouts. So if I have a way to take out Dale, um, then the you know the North would be at war, and I can get the Witch King. This this could be working out well. I'm also happy to have units up here so that you know because that's going to be on his path of the Fellowship, so I can get some extra rerolls. All right, so you can look at my you can look at my hand here. I have half orcs, goblin men, Isildur's bane, day without dawn, dreadful spells, new powers rising. On on they went and returned to Valinor. These are all great cards. Think about what you would discard here if you had to pick. I got rid of return to Valinor. Now maybe that's wrong. Um, I definitely like keeping the card drawings, especially when him when he's revealed like this. It can and, and Gandalf is still guide. He can. It can really slow him down if I get some additional reveals. Day Without Dawn, I'm obviously keeping, especially, you know, I'm so close to getting the South Rounds and Easterlings to war. I could stall Gandalf or Aragorn by whole turn. Um, though he's, at this point, probably not getting Aragorn if he's going this way. Um, on on the, they went, I want to keep. So really, it was between, for me, it was between Dreadful Spells and Return to Valinor. And I don't know what was right. I mean, if I'm attacking into Dale, maybe I want Return to Valinor. Um, as the combat effect, it's such a good combat effect. Um, and I don't have that many Nazgul right now. I don't know. I think because I had half orcs and goblin men, I knew that I could use devilry of Orthanc up here in, in these combats. So I think that's why I ended up keeping dreadful spells. All right. So I allocate one eye. I don't roll any, I get plenty of musters. I'm happy, um, that I, that I did not overspend um, on musters last turn um, but he gets two two wills of the west and so I'm feeling a little bad right here if he manages to kill off Gandalf and and here's an interesting question for you do you play wizard staff now you know this is a situation where he could I don't know it's relatively unlikely that he's getting Gandalf if he uses a ring maybe um, do you, do you play wizard staff and just go slow? And so, you know, I think this is this is an argument for last turn having um, Strider as guide because now I could switch back to, to Gandalf if I wanted and I'd have um, already made a little progress. Um, yeah, and the other thing here is he has a lot of good, I mean, a lot of good fellowship defense here. Wizard staff and axe and bow are nice. Andy now has the Palantirs to play them as Gandalf, but he also needs to get the Fellowship moving, and I only have one eye. The issue is, I have Warren with Sauron Toil, so it's going to be a little tricky. What's what's going to happen? Um, all right, so let's see. So he starts off with Wizard's, Wizard Staff, and and, it, and and that I'm honestly I'm honestly relieved by because um, I'm happy for it to be slow for him to get Gandalf. Uh, my military started off slow. Um, I'm happy to have the extra time. So I go ahead and immediately muster the South Rounds and, and Easterlings to war. Oh, and this is a good note. Jim declares he doesn't want to use Gandalf's card drawing ability. So we were we were talking on discard, Discord. He didn't draw a character card here. And I think I think that's a mistake. I mean, might as well draw it. I realize you're gonna end up throwing away cards for sure, but I don't think you're running out of cards in the character deck this game. And so I would rather just have more to pick from and have the six best cards in, out of seven instead of the six cards that I have. Um, and am I really going to spend time to play Axe and Bow? I mean, maybe if, if things are going really badly for the Fellowship, but I didn't draw a lot of, I, I haven't, didn't, didn't get a lot of characters here. Um, and, and that's, so I muster right away and, and maybe the right thing to do is play, is play Isildur's Bane with this, but I want to, I want to save it for the possibility of Day Without Dawn if for some reason he hadn't spent that other, um, Will of the West. All right. So he moves and he should be safe and he is safe. And I go ahead and take Karak, um, and, and form up this army. So what's interesting here is I can actually get either the north to war by attacking through Dale, or I can even get the dwarves to war by attacking into, into Iron Hills. And obviously I don't want to attack into Iron Hills while he still has this muster available for Erebor. So I'm going to try and time this attack for, for something that, that we'll be able to, 
sort of slow them down. All right, so I go I go for Woodland Realm first, and maybe that's wrong. Um, if I had kept Deadly Strife, maybe I could have just gone for Dale and then gone for Woodland Realm. But I guess I'm willing to wait a little bit. I want to get Woodland Realm out of the way before he's drawn Thrandil's Archers. This army isn't so big. So, all right. So I go ahead and go for Woodland Realm. He goes into Siege. And then um, I get the Witch King because now the Elves are at war. Play Half Orcs and Goblin Men. Probably did that slightly out of order. Um, you know, I probably, probably should have gone for um, half orcs and goblin men first before the attack. I don't, I don't know. So I should be ready for the attack. And then he gives me a ring to move because I only have one, I only have one die. So that, that seems, that seems reasonable. I get lucky and roll a six. I needed a five or a six, but still that's lucky. And, um, he gets rid of wizard staff because of course why wouldn't you at this point and now i play isildur's bane and while i'm generally reluctant to play card drawing or tile drawing cards while he still has gandalf that would give him an opportunity to lose gandalf certainly while he has a will of the west showing isildur's bane in particular is safe because he has to take it as corruption he won't be able to lose gandalf so um, I play it, I get a three. I mean, what, what more can you ask for? I mean, I guess maybe a two reveal, but this is, this is an incredible draw for Isildur's Bane. So, you know, I had bad luck on the very first turn of the game, but every other turn since then, things are, things are really going my way. So um, that's, a super, that's a super lucky draw. Um, and then he moves again, because why wouldn't you? Um, you know, corruption, yeah, he just took some corruption, but the Fellowship is still feeling perfectly healthy. Um, and he's safe on that roll, which I think is, you know, fair. And a little bit there, he wanted to get caught so that he could lose Gandalf, so that at the very beginning of next turn, um, he could bring Gandalf in if he ha if he happened to roll a Will of the West, so that he could bring Gandalf in before I had a chance to get rid of it with Day Without Dawn. So, um, you know, it's always good to not get caught, but sometimes it's also bad to not get caught. All right, so I go ahead and start um, attacking Woodland Realm. And, you know, I thought about, do I want to save Dreadful Spells for the um, card effect? Or do I want to go ahead and play Devilry of Orthanc now to cycle the character card? And my thinking is, you know, the whole reason why I ended up keeping Dreadful Spells was so that I could play it here, cycle a character card, and get just deeper into the character deck. So um, I go ahead and do that. That was my plan, and um, you know it didn't end up making a difference in, in the combat result, but um, it's still good to play at Cyclic Card. So I do one damage to him, he does one damage to me, and I stop here because um, you know I don't want to push too hard um, right now. M maybe I should have? I don't know. I do have two elites here. This army is pretty much ready to go. I don't want him to draw Thrandall's archers next round. I mean, chances of that are only one in 19, so I'm probably okay, but it is something I'm thinking about. But I like I like the opportunity to cycle with the Witch King, and I don't think that I'm getting three hits. Um, um, or, oh, even two hits. Yeah, so am I, am I getting two hits on five dice, uh, on 10 dice? I mean, maybe, I might. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should have continued here. This this could this could have been a mistake. All right. I'm happy to see Orc Patrol. I always like the card, the tile drawing cards, and um, we go on to next round. So I just drew Corsairs of Umbar. I'm thinking to myself, oh, maybe I should have moved those to the wrong place. That's that's bothersome. I might still be able to sneak these guys to Umbar and then get to Dol Dol Amroth um, before he gets Gondor to war, and um, and that'll be great. I'll be able to sneak this in. Um, the elves are already at war, so obviously I'm worried about Cairdan ships. But if he doesn't have Cairdan ships, then that could be that could be a really great way of getting getting to Lamroth. Um, and I'm again, my cards are great. I'm really happy to see Palantir of Orthanc. That's going to waste a Will of the West while he's trying to get Wills of the West for um, Gandalf. And on top of that, I have Day Without Dawn. So you know this is this is good stuff. Um, he's obviously happy to see Dan Ironfoot's guard. 
and Aomer is always wonderful. So, we're, you know, these are these are getting good, good cards for him. And that's interesting. So he doesn't declare the fellowship. It's at three movement. One, two, three. I guess he doesn't want to be right next to my guys. Um, and he doesn't want to give me a reroll by going into Carrick. Going into Carrick does prevent me from playing um, Orc Patrol. Because it says play if the fellowship is not in a region containing a free people settlement. It would actually prevent me from playing that card, but I don't think it's worth <clears throat> I don't think it's worth giving me a reroll for it. Alright, so um I get two more eyes. He gets a will of the west. And so this is, this is you know, he's happy to see this. Three eyes, he's gonna move once, get rid of Gandalf, and then um that'll be good. So but he moves once and I miss him. So he doesn't he doesn't get Gandalf, um, at least he can't kill off Gandalf right there, and um, I play Palantir here, and that's that's just sweet, right? Because um, I'm happy for him to get rid of this Will of the West, um, and definitely not get Gandalf. I'm thinking he might be using a ring to to get the to try and move a second time to be able to kill off Gandalf. Um, I thought about using the character die to play this Palantir, but I didn't want to be that greedy and I didn't want to tempt him too much. I think this way he'll probably let me get one free card draw and go for Gandalf. And then he's going to spend a ring, go for Gandalf, and then I'm going to play Day Without Dawn. He will have given me a ring on to move against three eyes for the second time, and he's not going to get Gandalf. And that will be satisfying for me. So that's my read on the situation. I think that's what he's going to do. And that's why I end up not tempting him too much to, to play the um, the will of the West. All right. So he passes. I think that's, I think that's right. And, um, I play on, on, they went because I want to get my free card draw from the Palantir. I'm happy that he didn't get rid of it and I get candles of corpses. So that's perfectly fine for me. And then I go ahead and, and attack Woodland Realm. Now, Dread and Despair is interesting. Maybe, maybe I should have just played this for the character effect. Um, but I want to cycle into, th I mean, for the, for the, um, for the card effect, just to do 1.5 corruption, but he has a pretty full fellowship and I want to get to things like cruel weather. Um, I want to get to more card drawing tiles, tile drawing cards. I want to get to the red tiles. So I'm deeming this as just a little bit lower priority and, I wanted to I wanted to cycle something. I'm gonna save all of these other cards to play for their card effects. All right, so I miss everything and I don't press again here. I'm not sure why not. Um, I get lower the ring. He musters, oh no, he he does exactly what I expected, which he moves Gandalf, moves again. I hit him this time, he gets an eye and he chooses to kill off Gandalf for one corruption because he wants to get he wants to get Gandalf. Um, so that's five movement. He's certainly making progress. Um, but he's disappointed to see that I have Day Without Dawn. So Day Without Dawn, of course, I was saving that for the moment that I needed it to stop Gandalf, and it does. Obviously, that is disappointing when that happens. Hopefully, for his sake, he'll roll uh, Will of the West uh, next turn. All right, he hides using Strider's ability, and um, I go ahead and get two more Nazgul. I guess I'm thinking uh, I'm going to put some on the Fellowship just to slow him down. I want... Um, did we forget Warren with Sorrow and Toil? I wonder if we forgot Warren with Sorrow and Toil there. Ah, and that is why... That is why we rewatch games. Okay, so we forgot we forgot Warren with Sauron Toil, and that's on me. So it is in a, in a tournament game. The expectation is that the shadow player will remember that effect, and the card says, um, if a companion in the fellowship is taken as a casualty, you may also discard one of the free peoples. So may means it's optional. And I don't have to use it. I don't know why I would ever not use it, <laughs> but the effect is optional, and therefore, um, I, I don't. I can't imagine. I don't think there's 
If you can think of a strategic reason why it gives Shadow some advantage to not discard a character card, then um, feel free to let me know. But um, you should always use it. I mean, there's no reason not to use it, but I, I forgot. So, ah, no, I didn't forget. Haha, -ha, look at that. I randomly discards a free character card. Okay, so we didn't type it in chat because we were talking on Discord. Discord. All right, so I didn't remember. I did remember. <laughs> There it is. Hard to see. I don't know what I discarded. Um, next time I'll try and next time I'll try and notice. I don't know how bad how bad it was for him. What what we ended up discarding there. All right, moving on. That was a long discussion of Warner Song and Toil. Okay, so I put, I muster Nazgul and then I go ahead and put some Nazgul in the path of the Fellowship and I get this army ready to go, and I get this army ready to go, and so that way I can use a character die to move backwards into Umbar. And then, um, Corsairs of Umbar, we'll see if he musters Gondor to war or not. Um, all right, so I'm happy to see Mumakil with these elephants coming into battle. Ringwraiths are abroad, is great, good flexibility. And he gets another Ent card. Let's see what he discards. He discards Guards of the Citadel. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I'm probably not coming into Minas Tirith. And if I do, then they'll be at war. So he can muster before I get there. Um, do I really need two Ent cards right now? Am I, I mean, maybe, hopefully he's getting Gandalf. He's going to show up in Fangorn and then he can do some damage. But um, it's not entirely clear that I need both of those Ents. I guess I want to keep two so that if one gets discarded with Warm of and Toil, I still have another one. That could make sense. All right, I roll two more eyes. I think about allocating more than one, but you know, you're expected to roll uh, a little more than one. So I think that's why I only did one. And he gets tons of Wills of the West. And I think, oh, what if I, if I only had another Day Without Dawn? But he's happy to see that now. He knows that Day Without Dawn is gone. He's going to easily be able to get rid of the Palantir. You know, I was thinking it was going to be hard for him to get rid of the Palantir and get Gandalf. But no, he has no problems. He can get rid of both. So um, the first thing he does is get rid of the Palantir. That's correct, because why let me draw some extra cards? And... Um, I go ahead and play Orc Patrol here because I want to try and reveal him, and I do. So that's great. He takes one Corruption, and he is revealed. He has to hide again, and um, it's it's actually slowing him down because otherwise he'd be able to move with that this turn. Um, so that's a that's a good reveal. And I go after Woodland Realm. I go ahead and cycle Lure of the Ring. I mean, maybe he's going to end up being revealed at some point and I could play Lord of the Ring and do an extra two corruption, but I'm just, I'm not really convinced that I'm going to be able to get him on corruption. So mostly I'm trying to cycle into other red tiles and into cruel weather. Um, maybe I shouldn't even bother playing the orc patrol, but it had some decent chance of revealing him and just generally thinning this thinning this pool when I have um, red tiles in there um, is good for me. So so that's why I still still play the tile drawing cards. And it did end up slowing them down, which was good. All right. Um, I am not having a lot of luck in the Woodland Realm. And so I am feeling kind of good about not pressing there. He's starting to whittle this army down. And um, I draw Grand. I think I'm going to end up using Grand on the Woodland Realm. Um, okay, so I drew another character card because I had the chance. I wanted to see what my options were if I were gonna if I was gonna cycle something once I start my next combat. Um, I think I go ahead and do Grand. Yep. <laughs> so Grand against Woodland Realm is like five attacks to take out Woodland Realm. Um, maybe that's overkill, but I did manage to get into Cruel Weather, so I cycled a bunch of cards that way, and um, finally take out Woodland Realm. So there it goes. And you can see if I had pressed, um, I guess maybe he wouldn't have inflicted that much more damage, but I did get to cycle cards. So, all right. He plays Axe and Bow here, which is surprising to me a little bit. Can you not just move? Um, yeah. And especially with Worn with Sorrow and Toil in play, I can get rid of that. So, I mean, I guess you can, if I do damage, you can get rid of Axe and Bow before Worn, Worn with Sorrow and Toil triggers, I think. Yes. So, okay. Um, I go after Iron Hills here right now 
because he hasn't moved yet. He hasn't moved at all this turn. And so my thinking is, um, you know, I could, maybe I could have gone into Dale, but I'm worried that he has scouts by this point. And so my thinking is, I'm going to go after Iron Hills. If he chooses to muster into Erebor um, with his Will of the West, then yeah, that's going to make Erebor harder to take. But I have a decent size army here, decent size army here. I'm probably, I'm probably okay to be able to take him. And in the worst case, you know, I have Shadows Gather. It's a powerful combat effect, but um, I can also reinforce from North Rune if things go horribly wrong, though. Honestly, I'm probably going to play that as my first combat card. Um, so, so I think that's why I went for it. And I'm thinking if I can stall him effectively a whole turn, then that's worth it. So I go ahead and attack into it. Um, you know, he does hit me once and um, it progresses the dwarves all the way to war. But now he has a tough choice. And, um, oh, yeah, what am I thinking? It's not even that he didn't, <laughs> I forgot about Gandalf. So it's not even that he, he wasn't going to move. It's that he wasn't going to get Gandalf. Um, so all the more reason to not play axe and bow there. Better to move once. You know, I think you should always move at least once. Um, because my chances, even with three dice and and uh, um, Nazgul on you, my chances are only I think half, pretty close to fifty fifty. So I think it's I think it's worth moving there. Um, anyway, so of course he's going to get Gandalf. I, th I think it makes total sense to get Gandalf here than than defend Erebor, but um, yeah. So I guess maybe don't play axe and bow, don't move, defend Erebor. Or save that save that die for the end. What could what did he do with his with his muster? No, he had oh he had to hide. So what did he do that turn? He got rid of the palantir. He hid the fellowship. He played axe and bow. And he got Gandalf. Did I count that right? Gandalf, axe and bow, hide. What's the other thing? What the heck did he do with his last card? Oh, Palantir. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. He got rid of the he got rid of the Palantir War thing. So, I, yeah, so I guess he should have, I think he should have definitely gotten rid of the Palantir, definitely get Gandalf. So if you know you're doing those two things, and I know you're doing those two things, maybe do those first. And he did the Palantir first, but then why not get Gandalf? Um, you can see where I'm going with my attacks. And then if you're revealed, yeah, hide. And now you have one Will of the West left that you could save for something. And I think if you had to pick, do I want to play Axe and Bow or do I want to muster an Erebor? I think you're like, yeah, I definitely want to muster an Erebor over playing Axe and Bow. So, so I think the ordering was a little bit wrong there. Okay, so I managed to sneak um, into Erebor and attack it. And he, you know, he could maybe fight this. This is, this is uh, six hit points against five hit points. But I think the right thing at this point is to go into Siege. It's a little disappointing. Um but he does have he does have Dane Ironfoot's guard, so he's thinking, okay, maybe it'll maybe it'll be okay. All right. Um, that, sorry, I forgot about what what he did. All right. So here are more cards. What do you get rid of? I think pretty clearly Balrog. We'll see what I do. Yep, Balrog. And what does he get rid of? Helped him look for. Okay, fair enough. All right. So I allocate an eye, and I roll two more. I'm not particularly happy to see these musters, but it's not it's not that bad. Um, and he gets two movement. You know, we expect two and a half. So, you know, that's pretty average. Um, first thing he does, Dane Ironfoot's guard. Obviously correct. That's great. Um, now, at this point, I'm safe to attack Dale. Even if he has scouts, I'm not worried about it. And uh, But I managed to get a hit anyway, and he doesn't have scouts. So that's that. I leave one dude behind in Woodland Realm just in case. I don't know. Maybe he should come to Dale so that some point later he could reinforce Erebor but all right so that's that and then he passes and um he gives me a chance to put 
a dude on the fellowship before he moves. So, you know, I, th I think that's a reason I should have brought the unit to Dale because nobody's coming to recapture Woodland Realm. Um, and then I would have had a full stack of 10 in Erebor and could have put somebody on um, the fellowship and it, where it is. Now, why did he pass instead of moving? I don't know. I think it would have made sense to move at that point. But okay, so minor point, minor minor uh, mistake should should have had 10 there and zero there, I think. Okay, so he goes ahead and plays ends here. I get a little worried because it's possible if he has three um, end cards, it's possible for him to defeat me. Um, but and especially I've been holding I've been holding a new powers rising for a really long time. So I think it was probably right for me to move to Dale and get get a dude on um, Northern Ravanian while I had the chance. Um, and I don't know that there was an opportunity for new powers rising earlier, but all right. So he goes ahead and plays these ends. And that's an interesting choice because now I'm going to feel much more free to attack out of Orthanc. Maybe, you know, it could be super sneaky to just play one end and then play the file. Um, so, but he plays both and, um, it would have been, it would have been funny to play only one because if you play only one, I bet that it tricks me into moving all my dudes out. Um, so, all right, but that's what happens. He plays, he plays both of them. And now I know he has zero, he has zero in his hand. So I know that it's only one out of 15. And the next time he draws another end card. Um, okay. So he does that and does that, I guess he wants to, he wants to get all of the character cards out of his hand so that he can now start taking casualties. Um, yeah. All right. So I guess the whole, the whole idea of saving ants, you can't really, can't really save ants with warm Osar and toil and play. Um, yeah. All right. So that's a, it's clearly a good play. That is a good play on his part. He should, he should go ahead and play them if he's going to, he needs to play the file before, before he moves, he does so. And at this point, why well, if he's going to start taking casualties because he's at four corruption. You can't go that high in corruption. All right. Um, I go ahead and muster. I'm, I'm sort of being a little sneaky about this. I'm going to play, um, new powers rising near the end of the turn. And, um, what else, what else am I going to play? I don't know. Maybe ring wraiths are broad. Um, I could do something like ring wraiths are broad, umbar, corsairs of umbar could be pretty tricky. Um, yeah, there are some, there are some options here. Let's all right. So I muster here. I want to muster back. Um, he plays Aomer. I think that's, that's obviously good. Um, maybe, maybe you think about, I, I, I don't know. It's really hard to see. It's really hard to see ring wraiths are abroad into Corsairs of Umbar. So do you really, with that muster, do you really muster Gondor just in case? Maybe, but that's super hard to see. All right. I play a new power is rising. That's good. And then he moves this dude and gets a, just a beautiful army in Helm's Deep. So new power is rising. He's really prepared. I think that's beautiful. Makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. And now this, this army is at war and it can reinforce Rivendell and I have new powers rising. So theoretically th these armies could have gone up there pretty easily to, to harass Rivendell. I'm trying to think, where am I going to go to get my other victory points? It's taken me so long. He's really managed to beautifully defend Helm's Deep. Um, Lorien, maybe I can crack it. I mean, he can get it up to five, but I guess maybe my plan is just pile all of these units, all of them into Lorien. Um, I have shadows on Misty Mountain. I have, I had Balrog. I discarded it, but um, I have shadows on Misty Mountain. I, I can just pile into Lorien um, and then maybe sneak into Dol Amroth. So I think that's my plan. That's my plan for getting to, 
that's my plan for getting to 10 and I'm happy to see cruel weather. I'm waiting to play ring wraiths or abroad because I'm hoping he's going to move, get revealed, and then I'll be able to reposition these Nazgul. The other thing to consider with this muster is maybe get Nazgul. All right. I want to keep my armies moving, so I play Shadows on the Misty Mountain, um, and I save this to be flexible to play Ring Wraiths or Abroad. I think, that's, I think that's reasonable. All right. He's already played Dane Ironfoot's Guard, so I know this, this army is not getting any bigger. So I'm not in any huge rush to do this. Um, it obviously would be better for Ring Wraiths or Abroad to be able to like have already finished this combat, but I just didn't get enough attacks this turn. All right, so he moves, and um, I miss, but then I get my Nazgul and the army. And look, that army, dude, that, that six, that orc that I managed to get on him, managed to catch him. So, um, so I, I managed to catch him to reveal. That's obviously a bad tile. He loses Axe and Bow and then takes one. All right, if I had a card that punished him for being revealed, I would certainly play it, but I don't have it. And now I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should have kept Lord of the Ring. You know, I'm hitting him pretty consistently, so maybe I should have kept the pressure on. I did cycle a few, but I'm happy to be holding Grow Weather. So, all right, I play Ring Racer Abroad here. I get to reposition my Nazgul, um, and I go ahead and attack Erebor. Um, I play my Muma kill and he, it doesn't have any effect. He beautifully played daylight. So nice, nice combat card play on his part. And I just, you know, slowly power up and, um, I made a mistake. You can see that I lost two, um, Sauron regulars when I could have lost, um, Southron and Easterlings. And then I drew hill trolls. Um, so now that is not useful to reinforce this army if I need to reinforce this army, um, or not as useful because I only have one elite. So before you've drawn hill trolls, make sure if you have the chance, keep two Sauron regulars in there so you can upgrade them. So that, that was potentially a costly mistake. All right. I don't press because that's still a giant army and, um, all right. So he got Thranduil's archers there. So I managed to, I'm glad I managed to get Woodland Realm done by then. And um, turn eight, he is revealed. Nothing special that he can do. I allocate one eye, roll zero more, and he only gets one movement. So at this point, I think he's pretty low on movement. Uh, statistically, I don't know. It's probably, it's probably pretty close. Let's, let's take a look, see what the statistics are. Um, So he is minus six on characters, but plus three on wills. So, you know, um, at this point in the game, a little slow, but not, not too slow. All right. Um, so this is what we got. He got one movement, obviously disappointing if I only have one eye. And I'm worried that he's going to muster Gondor with this. Um, he hides the fellowship first. I think that makes sense. Um, and I don't know, I think I'm, I'm really playing risky here to not, to not be preparing Corsairs of Umbar because what else is he going to do with these musters? Um, I guess maybe muster some elves. What? I don't know. Like clearly this is the turn he's getting Gondor to war and mustering up. So yeah, I should have. I think this is a mistake to do this attack in Erebor first. I think I should use my army movement to do something, get these guys to Umbar so that at some point when he musters Gondor, I can't. All right. So I play my character card, um, Foul Stench. Why not? Cycle Worm Tongue. I certainly don't need that. And I get three, you know, one hit. Um, so we're just whittling each other down. Um, he passes. I draw a character card. Just... He is continuing to pass. I continue to pound on Erebor um, and just making slow progress. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. And then finally, I decide um, 
to move some armies. And, I, you know, I don't know what, what was going on there. I'm like pounding on Erebor. He's passing, passing, passing. And then finally, when he is just about to start taking actions or could, could start taking actions be forced to start taking actions, I go ahead and move. I guess maybe I realized it. Um, yeah, that was just a mistake for both of us. So he goes ahead and moves the fellowship. Um, I miss and I go back to attacking Erebor and, you know, the, I'm playing a second double re of Orthanc. So, you know, the um, half orc and goblin men is a powerful card. It's just a, it's just a great muster card because it gives you a leadership. It gives you an extra elite, obviously, but it also turns on all of these devil devilries of Orthanc um, combat effects. All right. I um, get him down to one finally. And at this point, I go ahead and press because even though I'm only rolling four dice, I think that it's it's worth getting one one more dude. And uh, I managed to roll a six, so that's good. I'm left with only three units up there. Good that I took it slow. Feeling also good that I took Woodland Realm slow. If I had even just slightly fewer dudes, um, it, th that attack, I wouldn't have been able to press at that point. Um, okay. So I think that's pretty standard. He goes ahead and moves into Pilar gear. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, it's fine. I play Shelob's Lair, and I'm waiting for him to muster Gondor. He realizes, you know, it's a waste um, for him to muster Gondor at this point because I'm sitting there with Corsairs. So he musters up Lorien. I think that makes sense. And um, I go ahead and play Corsairs at this point put Gondor to war and um, he musters into Minas Tirith. Why not? I don't intend to ever attack Minas Tirith this game. Um, all right. So I attack Dol Amroth here because I don't want to give him the chance to draw Círdan's ships. You know, I'm lucky that he doesn't have it already. I think that with Deadly Strife, these guys have a good chance of just taking it out. I have two elites. So, you know, why not go for it? Um, I think that I have, you know, probably at least two turns. Um, but the sooner I can get this taken out, the better. Oh, and it's not just that. It's it's um, Kyrdan's ships or Immerhill of Dol Amroth. He hasn't played either of those. So he actually has, you know, two out of 15. Not huge chances, but, you know, that's like 15% chance, something like that. So I go ahead and try and get it done right now. Um, Deadly Strife should get it done, and it does. Um, we both do three to each other, and I'm perfectly, perfectly happy with that. You know, maybe I can't take Pilar gear if he's going to super muster up. Then I'm, it's going to be a little risky to take it. But for now, I'm I'm the bigger army. Um, I have to be a little careful of um, military counterattacks into Umbar, um, but I'm you know I'm probably fine. I'm I'm getting close enough that he can't he can't just abandon all of his strongholds because then I can just take his strongholds and if we go both get if he gets to four and I get to ten in the same turn then I win. All right, so moving on, I got Nazgul Strike. This is great. I got Cruel Weather. This is great. I'm feeling quite good about this. Um, so he declares the fellowship. Makes sense. And um, I have plenty of plenty of swords. And he... Oh, I said one eye, but I didn't actually declare an eye. I didn't, it didn't actually move in. So we move that Palantir in now. And then uh, he rolls and gets, you know, perfectly nice roll. Um, he did have, so did he just draw that? Um, he must have, he yeah, he must have just drawn that. So I'm feeling really happy about having um, taken out Dol Amroth with my last action last turn because he did end up getting the 15% to draw a reinforcement. So it shows up in Pilar gear and I'm thinking, well, these guys are definitely staying put. Um, I need to make sure I take Edoras or maybe go and take the Shire um, with these guys. The North is at war, so I have to be a little bit 
careful about this mustering up. If I'm going to go attack it, I have to be powerful enough for it. Maybe I go after Helm's Deep. Maybe I go after Lorien. You know, I'm thinking Lorien because I'm more scared of Ents, but he has played two Ents already. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to try Helm's Deep. It's a little closer, I guess, is my thinking. And also, if you look at this army, it's this is seven hit points and this is nine hit points, even though this has two leadership. So I think that's that's my thinking here. Um, I muster up and I have um, have we come to kill. So that's going to be a very powerful combat effect against against these guys. At least that's my hope. All right, so I managed to hunt him successfully. We draw one, and he is one away from getting in. Um, you know, what What do you play here? Do you play Cruel Weather to push him back, or do you play Nazgul Strike to get to draw an extra, to get to hunt again an extra time? Um, I guess I was thinking better to Nazgul Strike first, I'm not sure. I don't know exactly what what the best thing is. He has enough movement to be able to get in either way. I guess if he gets revealed both times. So if I if I reveal him now, then he'll have to hide. Then he could move again. And yeah. So I think he's getting in no matter what. And my thinking is I would rather play Nazgul. If he's going to get revealed into Morinon, I won't be able to play Cruel Weather or Nazgul Strike. So if I can only pick one, better to better to pick Nazgul Strike because I'm getting the extra tile from Morinon. I don't know. Comment comment below. What, what would you do here? Do you play Nazgul Strike or do you play Cruel Weather to push him back? All right. So Nazgul Strike. Um, I guess... Um, I guess the benefit of Nazgul Strike here, right, the benefit of Nazgul Strike here is also I get to move my Nazgul, and I want to do that for military reasons. I want to be able to reinforce this in case he has drawn another Ent. I want to be able to attack into here safely, and yeah, sure, I'll lose Saruman, but I'll be able to still have full leadership while attacking into Helm's Deep and cycle cards with the Witch King. So I think I think maybe that's what I was, that's what I was thinking. Um, and I put a Nazgul here to try and trick him, that I don't have cruel weather because I'm probably going to hit him anyway. And if I manage to not reveal him, then he'll think what? I don't know. Maybe, maybe that Nazgul could have gone somewhere else. And these guys, I don't know what's going to happen with them. Maybe they're moving south. Maybe they're moving north. I think at this point, they're probably most likely moving south. Or maybe they're going to the Shire. Maybe that's my plan. All right. He's leaving Edris undefended, so maybe I'm going to be able to get to Edris also. Maybe this army can come down and merge. Um take out Edoras. All right. I do successfully hunt him with Nazgul Strike. He gets um, revealed and he gets a Hobbit, which is nice for him. Um, Worn with Sorrow and Toil does trigger. In this case, we have to look it up, but it does trigger because he was taken as a casualty um, and did not use his guide ability. So that's that's what happened there. Um, he, loses a, he loses a character card. I don't remember exactly what that was. Um, and he is revealed. And now um, I go ahead and attack into Fords of Eisen because now is the time. And I try Onslaught just to cycle it, I guess. I'm just cycling there. Um, and. Did I forget to draw? card so i cycled i cycled orcs multiplying again let's see i i move my armies i get rid of the die weird okay maybe i remember no i just forgot super weird so i played that but forgot to draw the strategy card. All right. You should remember the Witch King triggers. So, all right. This army is moving in. Um, he's getting into Mordor. Let's see if he gets revealed. And he does get revealed. So, um, if he didn't, if he didn't get revealed there, 
then I have cruel weather to push him back. That's interesting. And these guys, he's moving these guys from Minas Tirith to come try and defend Helm's Deep. But I have this army coming in first. So I'm not sure. And he's left Pilar gear now with this army from into Asgiliath. So I don't, I don't know what was happening there. I missed that. So, so he used his will of the West to get these armies moving to, to try and come and help Helm's Deep. Um, but he actually put himself at risk of cruel weather that way. And I don't know that th this army is making it in time. And I don't know that it's worth weakening Pelargir. He's going to have to move this army back to defend Pelargir. I guess this army comes and defends Edoras, so that's good. But he, but then, yeah, it's just he has a lot to defend. But either way, I would make sure I get into Helm's Deep. All right, so Warren with Sauron Toil gets rid of Guahir in the end. And now um, he draws an extra tile. We draw an extra tile, and um, it's another eye. So, um, you know, I think he got pretty unlucky to get revealed there. But then at least he got a little lucky when he got revealed to, to for the stronghold tile to be an eye. All right, so he gets into Mordor. Um, I move this army here. It's going to get to Westamnet before this uh, Gondor army arrives. Um, all right, so he's in Mordor, and there we go. I roll three eyes. At this point, I think I would rather just try and win the game um, this round. Um, he can hide with Strider, but he didn't hide with Strider. So he's leaving himself. This is really interesting. So he left himself revealed, but moved armies along. He transited this army from Pelargir to Minas Tirith. And he's moving the Minas Tirith army up to Edoras to try and get to Helm's Deep, I guess, or maybe just to defend Edoras. Um, it's a lot of actions. Depending on how long Strider survives, he could be using this die or one of these dice to hide, potentially. Um, all right, so I move my armies along. You know, I'm tempted to play something like Morgul Wound, but he still has a good amount of corruption. I mean, he um, in the Fellowship... Uh, he's, he's doing okay. Not great, but he's doing okay. Um, all right. So I go ahead and move towards Lamadon because I count one, two, move my armies into Helm's Deep, three, attack Pilargir, four, um, attack Helm's Deep. So it is it is possible here that I could that I could win this turn. I don't know that I am, but it's possible. I mean, this is a big army, and I have we come to kill. Um, so you know that I have a lot of I'm going to have a lot of elites in this army, and I have some good combat cards to play. So it's a little tough that he left he left Pilar gear um, so undefended that now this army can take it out. All right. Um, he moves into Edoras. Okay. And I guess Rohan is not at war yet, so he can't muster there. Why did this army, this army came all the way up to defend Edoras, but left, but you left Pelargir. So you didn't actually save yourself any victory points. That's tricky. I don't know how to, how to defend both of those. Maybe you just can't. Maybe you just leave like one dude in Minas Tirith. Or, or maybe even no one in Minas Tirith. You leave a decent army. You leave this army in, in Pelargir. You get this army all the way up to Edoras, and now Edoras is defended. And then I just go after the Shire. I just don't think you can defend. It's very hard to defend three of the four cities. Okay, but he is making a good attempt at it. All right, but I go ahead and take out Pilar Gear now um, before he decides to muster there. And now I'm up to eight. He plays the red arrow, um, gets Rohan to war, has a giant army here in, in Edoras. I'm worried he's going to attack into me, 
but I go ahead and attack Helm's Deep. He goes into Siege, and then he um, attacks into Westamnet because you know what else? What else can he do? Um, because if he if if I manage to take Helm's Deep, then I win the game. All right. So he attacks into Helm's into Westamnet. He does two hits. It's probably close to what we would expect. Um, I managed to get three hits and then, and then he presses and, um, I think that was bad because that just gave me a free movement. I mean, I just got to move for free those dudes into there. So I don't think pressing is correct. You just gave me four more hit points in the siege battle that I'm about to do. Maybe he thinks I'm just never going to be able to take it in one attack, but I'm certainly going to try now. Um, and he does still have, I mean, this is, a, this is a good army. So, um, yeah, things could backfire here. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely possible for things to backfire here. I have some control over when to stop and, and, and hopefully I won't get this army so low that it, it can't do anything. Um, we'll see what happens. So I start with, we come to kill and he starts with, um, heroic death and, um, I just get, you know, two hits right away. So that's, you know, just a really lucky start. Um, he only gets two hits. Uh, and then my, we come to kill gets another two. So, you know, four hits right off the bat is pretty, pretty brutal. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and press. I have, um, great host. I'm not going to use relentless assault because I'm scared of that, but, um, cruel as death makes sense while I still have such good leadership. Um, and I get two more hits there. He only gets one and this combat is almost certainly going to be done. And so, um, that's it. He just can't retake it. And yeah, it was an interesting game. I don't, I don't know. There weren't like a lot of major mistakes. Um, I think it would have been, you know, looking at this situation, could, could he have, if he, if he hadn't, I mean, the fellowship is not, is not dunking the ring next turn. Um, but if Pelargir had been harder to take and I guess, I guess this army comes down and takes Edoras. Did I have enough actions? I, yeah, I guess I still would have had enough actions this turn to have gotten that big army into Helm's Deep. So yeah, I don't, I don't really know what he could have done differently. There were a few minor things that I, that I commented on. I guess the big, the big swing was Dol Amroth. So if he had mustered earlier in Dol Amroth um, or just gotten Gondor to war, he could have, instead of passing, he could have had more units in Dol Amroth. I w maybe wouldn't have been able to take it in one turn. He drew Kyrdan's ships. Um, and I also think early game, if he had just gotten, uh, I mean, Woodland Realm ended up uh, withstanding a lot of attacks, but um, yeah, uh, you know, on average, that would have fallen pretty fast without anything in it. Um, if instead he had mustered early with the elves, then, um, he could have gotten it. And then I guess the Erebor, that turn where I was able to sneak into Erebor. So this game, I was able to sneak into Dol Amroth. I was able to sneak into Erebor when he had actually invested quite a lot of musters in advance, allowing him to be prepared to muster when I came knocking at the door. But because of the timing of things and exactly how the dice played out, he wasn't able to. And, um, that was able to work in my favor quite a lot this game. So, um, good game is a fun one. And, um, if you have any suggestions, Oh, let's look at the final statistics just to see what, what things look like. So these are the, these are the final statistics for where the game ended up, you know, pretty, pretty average. I guess I was a little high on eyes. Um, he was a little low on characters, but you know, he was really minus six on sixes, but plus five on five. So for free is probably pretty average combat wise. Um, 
Yep. It's a good game. If you have suggestions for other games or comments on this game, please leave them below. Thanks so much.